Hello there, I'm your host Dan Rojas, and this is a regular piece of sewing thread, something you would put in a sewing machine or to stitch something up with. What I'm doing is recreating a discovery that I made when I was about 12 years old that I actually stumbled upon accidentally. I was trying to hang something from a piece of sewing thread for whatever I was doing. I wanted to swing something back and forth, and the easiest thing that I could find was some ceramic magnets that I had gotten from Radio Shack. I put them on the string similar to this. Now these are newer neodymium magnets and uh, the magnets that I used again were the old style ceramic magnets. Anyways, what happened was as I put them on the string, they did what they were supposed to do. They acted like a compass and they looked for the north and south poles. Whenever I gave them a slight nudge in a counterclockwise direction, something interesting happened. They spun for a couple revolutions like I expected, but then they just started going and going and going and they actually did about three three and a half minutes of a spinning counterclockwise without me doing anything extra to it and again these were just hanging on a regular piece of sewing thread I had recently seen a documentary on PBS regarding perpetual motion and how it was pretty much impossible to obtain but after watching this I thought well maybe I was on to something here because these magnets were spinning all by themselves my theory at the time was that these magnets were actually using the poles of the Earth, the North and South Pole, to repel and attract the magnets, and that they, were, they would favor the counterclockwise direction due to the rotation of the Earth. What happens as the tension in the string builds up, or the thread builds up, the magnets come to a stop, and then they actually reverse directions, and as the string tries to unwind itself, they'll spin for about 25% of the turn, stop, then reverse directions again. When you release the object from the thread, there is a lot of tension built up. The thread will actually start spinning, trying to unwind itself to get back to its relaxed position. This usually goes on for about a minute. This gives you an idea of how many revolutions the magnets have overturned the thread. Once the thread has come to a complete stop, you can reconnect your magnets and start the process all over again. From this angle it appears to be going clockwise. In actuality it's going counterclockwise if you view it from above or at an angle. A few days after this discovery, I wanted to take it a step further, so I took a long piece of thread about 30 feet and I was able to get it way up in a tree by throwing a rock and wrapping it around a branch. The problem was the wind kept blowing and blowing that thread, the end that I wanted to use, way up into the tree next to it. I didn't have my magnets with me, so I finally got the piece of thread down and I took a set of keys that I had on me to tie to the string to act as a weight while I went to go get the magnets. Something quite disappointing happened. I noticed that the keys started spinning. They picked up enough speed that they actually outperformed what the magnets were capable of doing. On that long 30 foot piece of thread, they spun for approximately 10-15 minutes. After examining the thread with a small microscope, I discovered that they are actually twisted fibers spun to make up the thread. I initially ruled out the thread as a reason because of all the tension that remained when the object comes to a stop and also the fact that regardless of the brand of thread that I used, they always favored a counterclockwise direction. My new assumption is that the same manufacturer makes all sewing thread, or at least the machines that process the thread. Smaller objects spin much faster and demonstrate the reversing effect in less time. This only works with sewing thread. Dental floss and fishing line do not work. The best results are achieved when an object's weight is close to the thread's maximum load. This is a very simple experiment for you to try and see if you can get anything useful out of the results. I'm your host, Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.